Hi everybody, this is Kefran, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Payday 3. You will see that depending on the API, your FPS can change a lot. So we're going to start by uh, optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divided by two, so for me it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're gonna make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, in user interface, if you don't use a, a software like MS Afterburner, I recommend to activate your FPS count. You will see the amount of FPS that you have when you're playing the game. So really important to see that. After that, we're going to go to video and window mode. I really recommend to go with full screen, honestly. Uh, all this, those uh, other parameters, uh, it's causing some random stuttering. So I really recommend to go with full screen. Resolution, make sure that you're playing native depending on your monitor. So if you have a 4K monitor, go with 4K. If you have a 1080p, go with 1080p. For the frame rate, I just unlimit my FPS to have the lowest input lag possible. Really important here, make sure that you have proper temperature. So uh, no issue with your thermals because you're going to get some stuttering if you have that. So if you're playing on an old laptop and you have a 60 hertz uh, monitor on your laptop, just like your FPS at 60, honestly, it will help a lot. For VSync, I just put VSync at off. I don't want to add any input lag in my game. So that's why I'm doing that. Uh, if you have other technology uh, available, FreeSync, G-Sync, definitely you can use that. And if you don't like those tiering when you're playing, and you can definitely activate your VSync, but you will add a little bit of input lag in your game. I want to mention uh, I'm playing the game on Epic Games, so it's launching in DirectX 11, so I don't have any issue, but I saw a lot of... Uh, people complaining about DirectX 12 and I think those people are playing on Steam so I'm not too sure if you have some kind of launch option that you can just select DirectX 12 but I don't recommend to using it it seems to have an issue right now so go with 11. For field of view uh, if you have uh, if you increase your field of view for sure you're going to lose FPS so maybe start at uh, like something like 70 and after that after the old guide if you you have a a lot of FPS, definitely you can go higher. Uh, for motion blur and depth of field, I recommend to deactivate it. Depth of field, you will gain some randomly like two to three FPS. Motion blur, nothing, but it's more about visibility. I'm not a big fan of motion blur in any game. Uh, Anti-aliasing really depends on DLSS. So if you have an RTX card, for sure, play at quality. I don't recommend balance or performance. The game looks very blurry. So go with quality. You will have like 10 to 15% boost in your FPS. If you don't have an RTX card from NVIDIA, uh, I recommend FXAA. It's a basic anti-aliasing. It, it will not tank too much your FPS. You will lose like 2 to 3% max, uh, but it will be a lot better. After that, view distance, I recommend to go with medium. I saw 2% difference between low and medium, so not a huge hit. But when you go at high and ultra, you can expect like 4% drop in your FPS for each bracket. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. Shadow, this is pretty much the parameter that will provide you the most of your FPS. So if you're struggling with FPS, just put it at low. You can expect 25% boost in your FPS. Pretty huge amount of FPS over there. Post processing go with medium, 1% different between low and medium. But after that, when you go at high and ultra, you can expect 2 to 3% for each bracket. Texture, if you have 8 gig of VRAM on your GPU, go with ultra, 6 gig at high, 4 gig at medium, and less than 4 gig go at low. After that, effect, 
medium and low again not a huge difference uh so you have better visual but at i and ultra i was getting some random drops uh on my laptop i was playing with the gtx 1050 and honestly it was a big struggle in this game and the foliage again one percent difference between low and medium but after that at i and ultra you can expect two to three percent for each bracket so i recommend to go with medium so this is pretty much it guys for my payday tree guide if you have any questions just comment in the youtube section post me your rig cpu gpu and ram i will try to help you the best that i can and don't forget to subscribe to the channel peace